decide to bring Neil Young on to Crosby, Stills, and Nash, one of the most talented musicians? Stephen Stills played almost every instrument on the first Crosby, Stills, and Nash record. He played lead guitar, he played the bass, he played the B3 organ, he played the piano, right? We had a drummer, Dallas Taylor, who, who played the drums. Of course, David and I played rhythm guitar on, you know, Lady of the Island, and Marrakesh Express, and Guinevere, you know, Long Time Gone kind of stuff. But it was Stephen that played most of the, tr most of the tracks, right? So we know that we've made a great record. We know we're going to have to go on tour. We know that we can't go on tour because Stephen played every bloody instrument. Right? <laughs> Stephen and Dallas went to England. They talked to Hendrix. They talked to Stevie Winwood about joining us. And they, they obviously had their own careers and weren't interested in joining us. Stephen and David had a dinner here in New York City with our dear friend Ahmet Erdogan, who is the owner uh, and president of, of Atlantic Records. An incredible man. He, he passed away uh, you know, two or three years ago. <laughs> the only way that Ahmet Erdogan could possibly have died was at a Rolling Stones concert at the Beacon Theater when he went to the bathroom to take a pee and fell over, banged his head, and never woke up. <laughs> was, you know, Tragic, but a great way for Ahmed <laughs> And it was Ahmed that said, you know, I know who you need. And Stephen said, oh yeah, who, what, who, who, who do we need? He says, you need Neil Young. And Stephen had just gone through a couple of years of madness with Neil. I mean, it's well documented, you know, but what, what Neil brought to Crosby, Stills and Nash was not only the ability to, to bring a darker edge to our music, because the first Crosby, Stills and Nash record was kind of sunny, kind of acoustic, kind of gentle, you know, but Neil steps up and all of a sudden it's darker, it's more intense, right? And also, what Ahmed really loved about the Buffalo Springfield was the way that Stephen and Neil would converse with their guitars. You know, Neil would play something, he'd play eight bars of this, and then Stephen said, oh yeah, motherfucker, well try this. <laughs> And that was very attractive to Armin, and he felt we needed it, and so that's how Neil Young. But one of the things that happened is that I'd never met Neil. I knew he was a great writer. Expecting to fly on the Buffalo Springfield record was one of the greatest pieces of music ever recorded, but I didn't know him. I didn't know if I could go and hang out. I didn't know if I could tell him my secrets. I didn't know who he was. So I insisted that I had to meet Neil Young before we made this momentous decision to put him into the band. I had breakfast with Neil on Bleecker Street. After that breakfast, I would have made him Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> he was so funny and so sure about what he could bring to our band. That's how we got Neil.